debate over whether children are more influenced by their genetics or by the way they are parented is over. From nearly the dawn of modern civilization, anyone and everyone who felt so inclined would engage in the nature versus nurture argument. And, just in case you missed it, the argument is whether children develop good or bad characters because they were born that way or because they were treated that way. After hundreds of thousands of debates over the centuries, professionals on both sides have finally reached a conclusion. We are who we are as a result of the relationship between nature and nurture. In essence, it's not a contest, but a dance. Everyone comes into the world with a genetic makeup or nature. It's theirs and theirs alone. Height, skin color, hair color, gender, and other physical features are some of the obvious features of nature. Temperament, predisposition to alcoholism, to cancer, and to other illnesses are some of the not so obvious features of nature that also make up part of us. These features are natural gifts our parents give us at conception, and, try as we may, there's not much we can do to not be who we are genetically determined to be. But the environment or nurture can greatly influence these characteristics. There are four things we know about child development. Number one, all children are predisposed with certain characteristics, but the brain of young children is still developing. Number two, all children go through developmental stages with certain tasks and accomplishments needing to be met to move on to the next stage. Number three, the expectations parents have for their children strongly affects the overall growth and development of children. Number four, no child is average in all areas of growth. Children are unique with their own capabilities. To expect all children in one family to accomplish the same tasks at the same age is inappropriate. Parents learn about developmental stages because they want to make their children's lives easier, happier, and more fulfilling. When parents know what to expect developmentally from their children, their expectations are appropriate and they recognize children's accomplishments and efforts. But imagine if parents didn't know what infants or young children were capable of doing at different times in their lives. Childhood would be a frustrating experience. Young children might be expected to do things that older children could do, like feed themselves or get dressed. When children can't meet these inappropriate expectations, they begin to feel badly about themselves. That's when real trouble begins. When inappropriate expectations are constant, children often receive criticism about how they can't do anything or how bad they are. When this happens, they begin to believe that they can't do anything and begin to feel badly about themselves. A negative self-concept begins to develop. The relationship between having a sense of accomplishment and a positive self-concept is extremely critical in the growth of children. A self-concept begins very early in life based on how capable children feel they are in pleasing their parents. After all, children want to please the very people they are dependent upon. When the expectations are inappropriate, children see themselves as failures. Failures are children who can't seem to please mom and dad no matter how hard they try. When mom and dad are not pleased, they don't offer any praise. Without praise from mom and dad, it is nearly impossible for children to feel good about themselves and develop a positive self-concept. This failure carries over to school where children will often see themselves as incapable and less bright than the other children. There are four primary areas of development all children go through. The first area of development is physical. Physical development means that as children get older, they get bigger. Usually when they get older and bigger, their gross motor and fine motor skills increase. Gross motor means activities like running, throwing, jumping, and crawling. Fine motor means activities like riding, holding a fork and knife, 
and using scissors. Physical development is important for helping children not only increase their skills, but also organize their behaviors. Another area of development is intellectual. Intellectual development means that children learn more the older they get. They learn to recognize shapes and colors, recite the alphabet, figure out problems, and many other things. These intellectual abilities continue to increase as children grow older, but stimulation from the parents is necessary in order for these intellectual capabilities to develop. Without stimulation, these capabilities will lag behind or fail to develop. A third area of development is language. Language development means that as children grow older, their communication skills increase. Their ability to use words, phrases, and sentences in writing and in conversation helps them gain mastery of their environment by expressing their needs and understanding the needs of others. Language expands from a few simple sounds during the first year of life to the use of thousands of words in their teen years. Talking to children when they're babies and continuing good communication skills throughout childhood is an essential quality of nurturing parenting. The fourth area of development is social and emotional. Social and emotional development go hand in hand. The way we treat children and the care they receive affect the way they mature and are capable of interacting with others. Children's emotional growth goes from an early stage of dependence and taking to a later stage of independence and giving. The ability for children to use their physical, intellectual, and language skills to the best of their abilities and in positive ways hinges on how well they develop socially and emotionally. The developmental summaries of children presented in this video program serve only as a rough guide to normal child development. It should be noted that the lists are not a complete index of all the things children can do at given stages of development. Children born with birth problems such as prematurity, low birth weight, or illness may not be able to do the things that other children can do who didn't have problems at birth. Children with special needs will require the support of their family and others in their environment to develop the full extent of their capabilities.